Hi, my name is Brian Slocum. I'm the director of the Wilbur Powerhouse and Design Labs here at Lehigh University. In my job position, one of my main functions is to help students take their ideas, virtual 3D models, sketches, and turn them into real, actualized physical models. A couple of weeks ago, Stratus came out with a white paper introducing how it would be possible to use their object series of printers to create soft tooling for injection molding. So we decided to give it a try here at Lehigh. What we did was we took a project from one of our mechanical engineering classes where the students design small matchbox size race cars and what they want to do with that is uh, design the car and then create a series of injection molded tooling. Now traditionally this project is done uh, using a billet of aluminum and our Haas CNC mill. The problem with this is that the tooling, uh, creating the tool paths, setting up the mill is an extremely laborious process. It's very arduous and there's a lot of uh, stuff that goes into that. What we decided to do was to compare that, compare that traditional process with the new process where we would integrate tooling directly on our Object 30 Pro. Um, what we found was, amazingly, in under six hours, we went from car model and mold model to usable tooling. And that far, far, far uh, exceeds the ability of the, the milling process where you have a lot of setup and uh, you have to create a lot of tool paths for the, uh, for the mold. Do I think this is a game changer? Absolutely. Uh, the big takeaway from, from uh, this process, at least for us here at Lehigh, was first and foremost that we're actually able to successfully do this with very little prep. We just took the white paper, made a few modifications to the actual mold, and ran it on our printer. This gives us the ability to create more complicated molds. We don't have to worry about uh, the size of the tooling on the mill. Um, and the surface finish on this is, is incredible, especially when compared to like a traditional uh, methodology where we're using the Haas mill. Um, finally, you know, I, I think the other really great thing for us is that this now uh, allows students who have limited technical abilities in the world of machining to create molds and then get injection molded prototype parts out of it. Um, it's great for short limited runs, it's also great for um, sort of exploring the possibility of, of actual materials so that we can injection mold using ABS, polycarbonate, whatever, whatever we want to use. Um, that being said, we still have some limitations to using this photopolymer um, uh, tooling. One of the main ones is that uh, when we were doing this we found that this is an insulator. So in a traditional injection molding environment, the aluminum uh, molds actually act as a heat sink and pull the heat out of the plastic after it's injection molded. And in this case, um, this actually insulates. So our time between pulls had to really be extended. We'd have to let the plastic sit in the mold for you know two minutes or so before we could even open the mold, and even then the plastic was still pliable. So that was still a bit of a problem. Um, uh, the other thing that we had is, uh, if you look at the back, you can see that we have a catastrophic failure here of the mold. Um, this is in large part because we didn't have a backing plate over the mold, and so all of the force from the injection molding machine actually blew out the mold. Um, but this is overcomable uh, by doing a few things. We've already started to modify the design of this. Uh, this happened because our injection molding machine doesn't have a solid steel back plate, and so we're already working on adding a steel back plate to that so we can do this more frequently. Um, and I think we're also working on some other solutions to, to overcome some of the flashing that we're getting, which in large part also has to do with that steel backplate.